G'day folks, Scott here. Today I'm reviewing Eli Roth's Death Wish. This movie is a remake of a 1970s movie called Death Wish, starring Charles Bronson. And it's a murder, rape, revenge movie with a father out to get blood for what had happened to his family. Uh, possibly the first, if not very early, appearance of Jeff Goldblum as one of the rapist murderers and stuff in the original movie as well. Uh, and it spawned a whole bunch of sequels and made Charles Bronson somewhat of a, uh, you know, cult movie icon. So I was surprised they were remaking it. Uh, stars Bruce Willis, Vincent D'Onofrio, uh, Elizabeth Shue. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty openly not the biggest fan of Eli Roth's work. I think he's a pretty competent director as far as he, uh, you know, can shoot a movie. But he's made some poor choices as far as scripts or writing of scripts. Uh, his last two movies I saw being Knock Knock and Green Inferno, both which came out at a very similar, you know, short period of time from one another. Knock Knock was okay, but Green Inferno I really didn't like at all. If you're a fan of 70s and 80s movies and you've seen any of those cannibal classics like Cannibal Holocaust and Cannibal Ferox and all that kind of stuff, this was just a poor imitation of it that just didn't cut it. So I went into this movie expecting nothing. And to be honest, it was better than I thought it would be. It's still a mediocre script with very uh, subdued performances. It was lovely to see Bruce Willis on screen again at the cinema instead of all the director video or director streaming stuff that he's been doing over the last few years. And he was fine in it, but it was a very uh, subdued role, like I said, you know, from him. Uh, my biggest disappointment actually was having Vincent D'Onofrio in there, who I love. I really expected more from his character. I really thought that that character was going to go somewhere and maybe be, you know, responsible for what had happened in the film or have some kind of, you know, bad guy twist at the end and nothing like that happened. Uh, he, he, you know, just didn't go anywhere. It was a pretty, pretty lackluster performance. Um, yeah, there's not heaps to say about it, you know. It follows the same formula. Uh, surprisingly, it didn't get all rapey, which I really expected it to do. Eli Roth definitely likes to push boundaries and things and that wasn't really an element to it at all. Uh, I did like the fact that this time being a surgeon who dealt with gunshot wounds and gun violence and stuff regularly, having him then take up that mantle of the vigilante who was inflicting gunshot violence upon people and kind of a montage between him learning to use a gun and sewing people up or, you know, announcing people dead who had been, you know, hurt by gun violence. Uh, you know, that, that was kind of an interesting play on things. What I didn't really love was the fact that this movie really sat on the fence. You know, on one side, it was very uh, an advocate of stricter gun laws. Uh, it had a whole thing in a gun store where Bruce Willis had gone into, you know, inquiring about purchasing a weapon when he was really deciding whether he was going to go forward with this whole vigilante thing or not. And the girl there was, you know, really blasé about it. Nah, don't worry about the paperwork. Don't worry about this. We can have you hooked up within 72 hours. It's really easy. You can buy this, 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 and this. And it sort of showed that, that real ease of, of purchasing weapons. But on the flip side, it also really encouraged and almost glorified the, these actions of someone who would take a gun and then, you know, go and commit gun violence against other people who were committing gun violence and seemed like a bit of an NRA kind of tap on the back as well. Uh, so yeah, I, I really, like I said, I found it a fence sitting movie when it came to something that's very pertinent politically right now in the U S with everything that's going on. Um, you know, getting away from the politics of it, the revenge elements to it were fine. Uh, there were some cool deaths in there. There was some pretty cool violence. I was actually spent most of the movie wondering why it copped an R rating in Australia, which if you're an American viewer would be more of your NC 17 kind of like higher rating than your R, which is more our M. Um, but, you know, some of the violence towards the end and a few of the revenge kills were pretty cool. Um, you know, got some good laughs from the audience, uh, good gasps and things. I really don't have much else to say about it, you know. There was certainly no outstanding acting. There was no outstanding writing. It was well shot. There were some cool scenes in it. Like I said, it was better than I thought it would be, but considering my lineage of my feelings on Eli Roth movies, that's not saying a whole lot. If you're a diehard Bruce Willis fan, I get the pun, or you're a big time fan of the old Death Wish movies, then maybe it's worth jumping into a cinema and giving it a look, if nothing else, to show that R-rated movies are still viable in the cinema and can make some money so they make more of them. Failing that, I'd wait for, you know, streaming services and check it out, or, you know, don't bother at all if, if it's not really your bag. 
I'll be back next week to review Tomb Raider. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.